Okay, then on the 28th at 11 a.m., walking out into garden at night, stepping carefully in stocking feet, wondering if there are any slugs or snails to look out for, trying to step around them. Sense of one shrinking or tumbling downstairs like a snail. Um, is it blo Oh, sense of blossoms. Sakura, like cherry blossoms and leaves, maple leaves on the sidewalk. So there's a sense of cherry blossoms spread out on the sidewalk, like in the spring after they blow down, and also red maple leaves. Um, 11.04, image of riding down the street in a car, Britney Spears in the back seat, acting crazy, pounding back of own, he own head, which I know is where um, implants are placed, with a fist. So she's pounding the back of her own head with a, a fist. So I, I know that there's a strong implant here. I kind of, I started to draw it up here, but it's actually kind of towards the back of the crown of your head. And I think anybody that is implanted with mind control has really strong radio frequencies coming from this area. I don't know if they're always activated. What I see with these implants is that sometimes they seem to um, be activated and sometimes they're not. Probably depending on, you know, I don't know if they're like on timers or if they're remotely activated to go for a certain amount of time. It does seem to be related to what they're doing to you. So, for example, when I was having lots of um, problems with mucus and stuff in my um, throat and um, lungs. I got a lot of signals coming out of my neck, throat, and lung area. Um, I have detected signals coming out of my heart, but not all the time. Um, I usually can detect signals coming from different parts of my legs, sometimes more than others. Um, sometimes I can detect signals coming out of my teeth, but not always. So, um, but this one on the, the one on the back of the head, you know, seems to be an important one. And I say it's Britney Spears in my dream, which it is in a specifically Britney with brown hair. But I realized as I was w waking up that my daughter has a cousin named Britney. It's Miranda's sister. So as I said before, Miranda was killed in a car accident it appears by swerving off the road um, in a mind control incident and I believe it was 2013 so um, this might be a double you know might not just be Britney Spears and I'm pretty certain Britney Spears has implants in her body I mean I'm pretty certain most if not all celebrities do um, but Britney Spears you know you can go online and see um, stuff where it appears that, you know, they'll, they call it MK Ultra glitches or whatever, but what they don't tell you is that these are probably done with, well, not probably, they're almost certainly done with frequencies. So you might be talking and all of a sudden you say something out of character or it seems like you switch um, into a different mood state all at once or you might even talk gibberish. You might even say something that doesn't make any sense. All of that stuff is direct frequency stuff and I did... You know, I've encountered this stuff with me where I've, you know, written something that I don't remember writing and things like that. And um, that's pretty scary. They can, can control you to that extent. And I think it's significant that Brittany has brown hair in here for, well, a couple of reasons. One is there was the incident where Brittany shaved her head, you know, a few years ago. And it got all this publicity and everything. That probably was a mind control incident. She was probably being affected by frequency-based mind control. And then there's this stuff where she had a, um, like a guardianship for a long time. Might even still have a guardianship and was in and out of, you know, mental health facility. It, there might be nothing wrong with Brittany organically. It might entirely, she might entirely be influenced by um, frequency-based mind control. And you know, the result is her freedom is taken away and she's essentially turned into a performing slave. The other thing about brown hair is this just sort of, you know, racialization of a lot of this stuff. So I think people um, 
who are, you know, who are not celebrities, if you're, if you're not white, you're more likely to be manipulated in this way, I think. Now, I'm not certain of this because it seems like, you know, they also um, weaponize white supremacists. But the reason why they weaponize white supremacists, I believe, is because the, a lot of the people who are behind this technology are actually interested in instigating racial conflict. So, I mean, part of instigating racial conflict is instigating white people, not just brown people. They want to instigate white people to, you know, um, terrorize brown people. They use people as tools and instruments. Um, and I, I don't know even if, you know, at the top level, if they're even that concerned about race. I think they're just concerned about their own club and their own family. They, you know, they had they and their cronies are the ones that want to be on top and be in control and have all the money and have all the power. So this is one of the techniques that they use. Um, they enslave, you know, celebrities. They, um, if celebrities, you know, if they feel like it, for whatever reason, they, you know, instigate problems with this mind control technology by, you know, affecting people's behaviors. They seem to have access to the police forces, um, all of the police forces. Uh, they seem to have control over the attorney generals. They seem to have control over legislators, you know, a lot of people. And then, as I've said before, you know, I think that some of our presidents themselves have been implanted and under mind control. I think, um, you know, strong sense that Obama has been involved with this long before he was president. If, ba if Obama was involved with this long before he was president, then Obama had mind control devices in his body. Uh, Trump probably has mind, well, he seems like he has mind control devices in his body because of his behavior. But, um, beyond that, just his position as being a, a wealthy, you know, person who travels around a lot and is involved in businesses in a lot of different countries would suggest to me a profile of somebody that they would want to, um, implant, track, and if possible, control. So, um, you know... I don't know about modern day Americans, but I know that our founding fathers were pretty concerned with outside influences in our government, like non-democratic influences. And I would say that this would count as a non-democratic influence. If we have leaders who are involved in mind control technology, either as controllers or controlled, and I don't think you can be a controller unless you're controlled, unless you're at the very, you know, tippity top of the stack. Um, that should be a concern, like a huge concern. You know, we've got people running around with a nuclear football who's who's um, pushing their buttons. And then I have 1126 image of a mascot or cartoon googly eyes being like a woman's breasts. Um, so, you know, okay. But the interesting thing about this is when I started, when I walked to the store later that day, I, somebody was walking in front of me in a sweatshirt that had, I don't even know if it was googly eyes. It might've been bicycle wheels on the back of a sweatshirt, but it had that look. So, um, not the first time where something that I've dreamt about, but didn't read about or publish anything about suddenly shows up in the neighborhood in some way. like the same day 1137 more stuff about being sex trafficked from family members uncle psycho in the bathroom bugging so this is a line from um plain jane uh i think i keep feeling like this is a reference to um you know in addition to maybe people who were in my home either, you know, boyfriends or band members, you know, so people who have a casual relationship with you or, you know, a romantic relationship with you who are secretly in your bathroom, you know, um, placing bugs, removing bugs, whatever they're doing. Um, and I remember um, one of our drummers was in the bathroom for a real long time and he wasn't somebody that had a drug habit, so there wasn't like a plausible understandable reason why he wouldn't leave the bathroom and I thought the guy was maybe in there doing some cocaine or something but um you know it's probably something like this um but I also feel that this is related to my uncle Dean and I increasingly feel that my uncle Dean um might have been involved with some 
scary criminal elements, uh, and other fat relatives as well. Um, and there's this, what I see is a pattern of the late 60s and early 70s of these couples, you know, new couples, newly married couples being photographed next to new cars. Uh, my parents, it was this red Porsche. My, um, dad's younger sister, uh, was a Volkswagen, you know. Um, and Uncle Dean, they were in front of a sports car. I can't remember which kind exactly, their wedding. And I remember their wedding. It was like 1971 or two. I remember it. Um, so that's partly why I can't get help from family members because they're all incorporated into this. And maybe, um, my Uncle Dean was more deep in it than others, but he had a lot of influence in the family. He had a lot of money. He appeared to be a very competent, you know, everyday kind of, you know, upstanding American. Um, but I think a lot of people make these choices and get involved with these elements at a pretty young age, and then once they get involved, it seems like there's no way to get uninvolved. That's why I think it's important that the crime system is actually dismantled and not allowed to call the shots. So then I write, I feel really frustrated, conflicted. Um, and this is, you know, this is essentially a message from a dream, but it's also the truth. Um, frustrated, conflicted, vacillate between wanting to rest and avoid the madness and being enraged about it. I don't know that I really want to um, arrest and avoid, but I mean, I have to rest sometimes. I have to actually disengage my mind from this at times. It just has to happen. But sometimes I get really enraged about it because it just, you know, every time that I've tried to actually put my trust in a system and, you know, especially if it goes against my gut feeling, but, you know, you know, you're getting this pressure to behave in this way or to, to take this path, um, it ends up being a total, you know, um, fraud, you know, and it's police, you know, involved in this too. Police saying, oh, she can't, you know, but this, again, it's like, you know, let's get back to, the, to just basic logic. It doesn't make any sense to let the criminals dictate the terms of solving the crime. It doesn't make the criminal any sense to solve a crime around some sort of arbitrary timetable. If this was a game, okay, because it is, they tried to present it as a game, and if it was a legitimate game, if we were playing chess, or we were playing football, or we were playing basketball, it would make sense to make it around a time clock, because everybody knows the rules, okay? Everybody's following the same rules, everybody knows the rules, there are rules, there's a court, there's boundaries, and one of those boundaries is the time clock. That's not what this is. This is, this is a crime. I don't know if there are rules... I don't know what they are. There's some kind of book people are always making reference to. I don't know if that book actually exists. I don't know who has access to it. I don't know who doesn't have access to it. I don't know any of that. And so therefore, it's not really a game. It's just, it's mind control. A lot, most of this stuff is about mind control. The idea that this is a game is about, is mind control. It's not a game. It's a crime. It's not a war either. I mean, you know, you could look at it as a war because it seems like it's operating somehow outside the law, which it shouldn't be. But if you look at it out as a war, that a war is not a game. A war is a war is something you try to win. And there may be rules that you follow, you know, or or try to follow or are supposed to follow in war situations, which by the way are not being followed in this situation. You know, because you're not supposed to use biological attacks in wars. You're not supposed to use chemical attacks in wars. I don't know if there are any rules around directed energy attacks in wars. You're not supposed to target civilians in wars, and I am definitely a civilian. My daughter is definitely a civilian. So it's not really a war. R really, the only category that this fits is crime. That's the only category it actually fits, crime. So that's the way it needs to be treated.
Next image is of a cigarette butt and just setups. And yes, yeah, setups are, are major here. Setups and mind control. You know, mind control is how they make it seem like these setups are even legitimate. They're not legitimate, they're criminal. Some of them are criminal and some of them are just, you know, fraud. But um, most of them are criminal because they actually put you in harm's way on purpose. And they're, and they're designed uh, to, as theft. So, like, when I was kidnapped, um, I was literally kidnapped. It was a kidnapping in January 2014. Now, I'm aware that I can't probably do anything about it. I'm aware that probably the FBI was involved in kidnapping me. So this is the big joke of this, right? If you're kidnapped, and especially in a situation that crosses state lines, whose jurisdiction is it? It's the FBI. Oh, guess what? The FBI was participating in it. So you aren't going to, you know. And, and it's not like that kidnapping is the worst thing that happened to me, but it was bad, okay? It was, and it was not only just kidnapping. It was kidnapping done for a specific reason, and that reason was to continue a bigger crime. So I'm pretty certain that's aggravated kidnapping, which is even worse than regular kidnapping. So that's what it was. It doesn't matter if the FBI was involved in it or not. It was still a kidnapping. And so repeat this over and over and over again. And that's how big and how nasty this crime is. Um, the same goes for the, you know, the surveillance stuff, the trafficking of the surveillance, the um, theft, the child pornography, child trafficking, which is, you know, trafficking is um, transporting illicit materials, especially if you're getting money for it. I'm pretty certain that's the definition of trafficking. This is trafficking. So the crimes are still crimes. You know, if you get the FBI involved in the crimes, it's a big problem for the victim of the crime because it means that um, the victim is not going to be protected in the way they're supposed to be protected. And there was another crime that I keep slipping out of my mind that's similar to that. Oh, just the, the directed energy weapons assaults. These are real assaults. Just because nobody physically touches you doesn't make it not an assault any more than shooting someone with, a, one, someone with a gun. You don't physically touch the person, but the bullet destroys tissue, just like these directed energy weapons destroy tissue. Um, it's still an assault. It's still an attack. It's still, you know, potentially deadly attack. So just because these assaults are happening with directed energy weapons doesn't mean that no assault is happening. These assaults are happening. Um, and then the involvement of police, because this is particularly insidious, because, say, and the doctors, but it, say I go to a doctor, right, and I have, as I have had, marks all over my body, visible damage done by directed energy weapons, undeniably visible damage done. And so the doctors have to make up some sort of thing and pretend that they, you know, directed energy weapons don't exist, pretend they don't know about them, they know about them. Um, in fact, you know, doctors are, I don't know if doctors are involved in the microwave attacks that were tearing up my face, but they're involved in a lot of the attacks on my brain and my body. Um, they would have to be because these are metal call attacks. Um, and I know they're involved in the surveillance. I have, uh, you know, just pretty, pretty good proof, you know, pretty undeniable proof. I might not be able to prove it undeniably to someone else, but it's been proven undeniably to me because doctors have written things in my records, which I never said to them, but I did say at home in private. So if that's, if I say something to somebody at home in a private room and then a doctor writes down on their medical records that I said it to them and I know I didn't, um, that tells me that the doctor had access to surveillance footage of my home. Um, but normally if you're beaten up by somebody, say, who lives with you, and you go to a doctor and you say, I've been assaulted, you know, um, the doctor's got a duty, especially if you're in a vulnerable pro population, to report that as a crime to police. But what if it's the police that have been assault ass assaulting you? This is the whole catch-22 of this that has to be, you can't just say, oh, it's a catch-22, we can't do anything about it. You have to say it's not, a, you know, we have, to, we have to figure out a way, to, you know, you have to get into solution mode. There has to be a solution to this. Okay, Chris is back, so I'm come outside and I'm going to try to continue this to 
catch up with the <clears throat> present moment. Um, so I know at this point that Chris is um, playing Led Zeppelin. I think it's called, I asked what, what it was called. It said it's called Living Loving Maid on his guitar. So he was um, singing that and playing that a lot. And so for whatever reason, that song was um, interesting to him. And he gets songs in his head the same way I do as messages. So I can kind of, you know, he doesn't want to tell me his dreams all the time. And he's really, he's resistant to the idea. He, you know, he's never allowed me to, tr to test him for implants or anything like that. But I know he's implanted. And I know that he um, gets program dreams and mind control and all of the same, same stuff that I get. Probably in a different way. So... <clears throat> Anyway, that, that's the song that he was interested in yesterday. Um, 9.59, I think this is now p.m., yeah. So, um, I'm having dreams, but I can't remember them. They're getting erased, so I just am left with a, a sort of a crystallized idea at the end. So this one is idea of being calm, being sex trafficked. So I don't know, it might have to do with... Um, the idea of I have to walk this border because if I get yeah this kind of thing makes me really angry but then as soon as I become angry um, they try to say oh she's crazy like they don't have any they don't ever include context about she's angry as hell because her daughter of what they're doing to her daughter and her and what they have been doing for years it's in, absolutely infuriating what they've been doing to us but um, they act like it should be normal, that I should have no anger about it, that I shouldn't express anger, and that expression of anger in, is in and of itself somehow a sign that somebody is dangerous. So that's pretty ridiculous. Um, but then, you know, if you're overly calm, they just figure, okay, well, it's all good. We're just going to continue this crime. So it's, you know, and I'm not, it's, I'm not like performing anger. I really am angry, and I'm mostly angry you know, really angry now. I mean, I'm angry because of the crime itself, but I'm mostly angry now because the um, systems that are in place that are supposed to protect people from crimes of this nature are refusing to engage in a way that it, I can see anyway. Um, or if they do engage, they engage to attack me, the victim of the crime. So that's very angry. Ten forty nine PM Dreams in Background linked to Michelle Crone and Curls. So the idea the visual idea of curls, which means restriction. Then I see the letter K, like a big bold aerial black <laughs> style font. Eleven thirty three fish scales linked to arch shape, linked to skateboarding linked to mind control, including mind control murders. I see K, an image of skateboarding before that. So we have some sort of link, letter K, which stands for, I think, King. Um, possibly also K Records and skateboarding. Uh, I've known some people in my life who are skateboarders. In fact, um, one of the people that I mentioned, I think, um, yesterday in one of my videos, Vic Farrow, I think that he, you know, he came up because he was killed in a similar manner to Brett Bowman and Maury Herman, and he was a skateboarder. But there are other skateboarders that I've known in my life. I think this is 105 a.m. And I wish that um, I understood this better because it's very hard to read this. But it looks like it says, image of a shoe, Mike Payne. And it looks like it says on something in streets... I don't remember writing this. I can't really read it. And then they did... I don't know. 
I really don't know what it says. Stolen my items? I can't tell. But then I see something that says X. That might be X-ray, but I'm not sure it is. With... Self. And the one thing I can read here is Spring 1983. I decided that um, I thought that Brett had been targeted at least since 1983, and the reason why is because of a dream I had in 1983. I don't know what part of 83 it was, so I think I'll look back at that journal. Hopefully it's still there. Um, it has to do with the goldfish. It's a goldfish dream, and I felt really strongly that that was directly linked to Brett. And since the 1984 high school yearbook had a lot of clues that something was going to go on with Brett, um, and so another question is when did Mike Payne move to Humboldt County? Um, I think he moved to Humboldt County after high school. Because I don't think he went to high school in Humboldt County. I think he went to high school all, all through high school. I think he graduated from Sonoma um, College in Sonoma. I mean, I think he graduated from high school in Sonoma County, and then I think he went to junior college at Redwood College of the Redwoods in Humboldt County. And when I met him, he was 21 in 1984, so he would have been 20 years old in 1983. I don't know, but I guess I'll look at that um, dream from 83. I'll look at the journal from 83 and see what happened in spring. 3.01 a.m. Dream relating to violent weather. As I wake up, there is a news story on TV about tornadoes going on right now. More than 500 tornadoes in the past 30 days. Floods also. Um, last summer probably in sometime between June and August, I remember having a dream that just said tornado, or at least that's all I could remember was tornado. And I started to suspect at that point that tornadoes were one of the types of weathers that can be caused with frequency-based weapons. If they can ch cause temperature changes, which it seems like maybe they can, then they should be able to cause tornadoes. They can definitely cause thunderstorms. And I think that also has to do with temperature changes. So, um, 416 woke up with a um, again with violent weather in the background and another news story about weather comes on so I'm waking up with this idea of violent weather and then I'll and then as I wake up the news was on in the background and then the news story comes on at, right after I wake up then idea that the weather is linked to me and people who are not taking this seriously enough and yeah I know that And very few people are taking this seriously enough, from what I can tell. Then I hear a phrase at 422, slow down, s slow down the wheels. And I see a vision of wheels close up, and it's a white car moving backwards. Four twenty-four a.m. I see a bunch of black text, and within it, several instances of the word "gun" are glowing bright blue, like a primary blue color. Sense of danger. So this was a very stark image, very um, clear. So a bunch of black text, which I couldn't read, but then several instances of the word "gun" are showing up in bright, primary, glowing blue. airplanes but I can't see them because it's too cloudy. Four twenty seven. It looks like it says Pulitzer story on now. Sense of word eagle being important. So um 
I didn't even really wake up enough to watch whatever was on TV, but it's something about the Pulitzer and the word eagle being important. And then 4.34 a.m., I'm starting to wake up now, and I see there's reports about the, a flood in Tulsa, so there's a big flood happening, and measles outbreaks. Um, bio attacks are definitely something that's been going on, I think. It's just the timing of it just seems not necessarily, you know, I'm not talking about necessarily the measles outbreak, but, you know, a lot of stuff like this. So, um, examples, and it's not just the bio right now. I think it's been an ongoing thing. Um, Oregon State University has had lots of outbreaks of um, meningococcal pneumonia. And when my daughter was little, a, a child that was a friend of a friend died of men meningococcal disease. Um, so sometimes it's like instances of rare, and there there was a polio-like disease that came out um, in 2014, and I, I told I think I've done a video about this where. Um, some type of paralysis was done on me to imitate that disease um, as kind of like a, I don't know why they did it to me I think just to maybe show that and to scare me and things like that um, but there are definitely bio attacks happening even the the bug attacks when somebody plants head lice on you or cockroaches or bed bugs all of that's been done to us that's a type of bio attack and then there's directed energy attacks that appear to be like bio attacks, like when they attack your lungs and cause a lot of mucus um, or your throat. They can, you know, make you throw up. They can imitate opioid withdrawal symptoms. They can imitate flu-like flu symptoms. You know, they can do really a lot of different things with directed energy attacks to your biological system. So the gun thing I'm very concerned about, I'm very concerned about my daughter um, being set up and I'm seeing evidence that um, possibly that different tribes are participating in the setups of my daughter. So that makes me pretty sad and I'm starting to question the whole notion of tribes, whether tribes are not corrupt entities by design. I'll just leave that one out there for now.